SBS advises that the following program includes references to child sexual abuse and may distress some viewers. Sex tourism is a multi-billion dollar global industry and Colombia is one of its leading destinations. Here, sex work is legal, but a number of foreigners are coming for illicit sex with minors. So I've just touched down in Medellin, which is Colombia's second largest city, and I'm actually about to meet my driver. By day, she works for journalists like myself, but by night, she actually works as a pimp. Mariana, which is not her real name, fixes sex parties for foreign visitors. What are the tourists looking for? What do they ask for? Basicamente, si vienen a a conseguir prostitutas a que estén con ellos, entonces le piden a uno que una mansión, una finca, eh, con chicas, con vicio. How much does a party like that cost? Diez mil dólares. Mariana denies she's a pimp and sees herself as a tour operator. But under Colombian law, any sexual transaction facilitated by a third party is pimping. Have you ever had any Australians? Algunas, sí. He conocido. Les gusta mucho la mujer colombiana. Me dicen que les gusta mucho la mujer latina. This is where it all takes place, Parque Geras, a mix of high-end hotels, Airbnbs, brothels and nightclubs. Everywhere, sex is for sale. El turismo sexual en Colombia es una mafia muy grande y lamentablemente eh, nuestra ciudad tiene cosas muy lindas, pero el beneficio de que nos visiten más que todo es la sexualidad. Entonces, es algo que inevitablemente es lo que mueve la industria de Colombia. Accessing a girl is as easy as picking from catalogs that are shared across WhatsApp networks. And so how old is, say, this woman here? 20, 22, 25, 30. Más de 30 no tiene. No sabemos ni la edad, ni dónde vive, ni qué edad. How likely is it that some of the girls working in this industry are under 18? Tenemos una probabilidad de un 90% de que haya muchas menores de edad. Even though sex work is legal here, it's not if you're under 18. But it's estimated around 12% of sex workers in the country are children. Right now, the scene here is absolutely extraordinary. There are hundreds of party goers and countless women looking to pick up clients. And this corner is where it's all happening. By 10 p.m., Parque Geras becomes an open-air brothel. Tourists and young women fill the square. Why are you guys here? We have a special love for Colombia, okay? And what do you do while you're here? We party. We have a special home here in this, in this club. I'm gonna come here, they're gonna have a table for me, drinks, we're gonna leave with as many girls as possible, take it back to where we're staying and we're gonna have a party. Lights, camera, action, when you're with us, it's a movie. Right. Many of the girls here tonight look to be underage. And while police patrol the streets, no one seems too concerned. There's a lot of police out. We've seen a few ID checks, but beyond that, it's hard to imagine how this could be very effective. Later, I meet one sex worker who agrees to speak with me at a nearby hotel. 
as long as we protect her identity. She tells me she started this work when she was just 15. Entonces, por eso es que yo me hago allá en el parque, porque allá un cliente te paga, te paga un millón, quinientos mil, una hora. Eso para uno, un mínimo es, pues uno trabajando realmente un mínimo es muy poco. Pues no, no termina uno de sostenerse bien, bien, bien. She tells me it's common for pimps to hide a girl's age using fake IDs and that some tourists pay more for a girl's virginity. Eh, la virginidad sí paga mucho. Es por eso es que amigas me contaban que, ay, sí, ya perdí mi virginidad con un green. Yo, wow, te dio mucho dinero, sí, te dio mucho dinero, me sacó a compras, me dio ropa, me dio plata, todo. So how much do tourists pay for a virgin? Máximo un millón, un millón quinientos, Muy de buenas, dos millones, eso depende del marrano. Lo que ellos buscan, los gringos, en una chiqui es la belleza. No les importa si son menores de edad. O como para aparentar, entrar con una mujer bella, para sentirse en un los reyes, eh, entonces por eso cogen una chiqui de esas, porque a esa edad son muy bonitas, entonces por eso. In the north of Colombia lies the tropical beach town Cartagena. It's ranked among the most coveted cities in the world by travellers. But it's one of the most notorious areas for child sex trafficking in the country. And the perpetrators are hard to catch. Why is tackling human trafficking so difficult here in Cartagena? It's really hard to tackle it because they are extremely powerful. I think they have uh, funded police and networks within the structure, so you never know who really is on your side or not, and that makes it really, really, really hard. Ana Maria Gonzalez Ferrero is Cartagena's Secretary of Interior. Tonight, she's trialling a new protocol for cracking down on traffickers. Who's the target of tonight's action and why? So we have identified at least seven different networks. They move girls sometimes from other parts of the country, some from other parts of the city. And what we're going to target today is specifically brothels. Anna Maria is conducting raids on the city's brothels to check they hold the correct Department of Health paperwork. She's using a loophole to gain access and search for underage sex workers. But she's nervous because not everyone supports her methods. People tend to be fearful a little bit when they're doing something new. Leading the operation tonight is Captain Fatima Castro from the Federal Police. Buenas noches, Dios y Patria, Policía Nacional. En este momento nos encontramos haciendo un procedimiento de rutina de verificación del establecimiento. Señoritas, todas en esa esquina, por favor. Todas las señoritas con documentación en la mano, se me hacen en esa esquina. We've just raided the brothel. Some police are in here right now checking the IDs of the sex workers here in the building. And then we've got another group of police over here who are checking the business documents. Entonces, ya tiene el procedimiento el funcionario del Departamento Administrativo de Salud, que ya es algo de ellos. Y si ellos encuentran alguna irregularidad, alguna situación, yo procedo a la suspensión. Perfecto. Listo. They had all the papers, but I don't know if you noticed, but the real form was blue. It was in special printed paper, and the form that we saw was on white paper. So I really don't know if they just got informed that we were coming and just somebody falsed it out. I'm kind of used to those things happening. Entremos, por favor. Police surprise two more brothels, both 
also avoid being shut down. But at the final brothel of the night, it's a different story. The condition of this brothel is horrific. The rooms where girls are working are covered in black mould. It's enough to force it to close. But the most important check is of sex worker IDs. Were any underage sex workers identified? No. And I think that is a result of the frequency of our operations. At first, it was just very open. So every time we went into a place like this, we would find a minor. It's been like three or four months. We haven't found a minor in any brothels. I think they're hiding girls better. I don't think they have stopped exploiting girls. I just think that they're doing it more discreetly. The raids may not have uncovered any minors, but this footage was captured by police in April this year. It shows police cracking a major trafficking ring with 15 targets including traffickers, pimps and clients, who were mostly foreigners. They found a labyrinth with more than 50 rooms where a number of minors and women were being held and exploited. According to local NGOs, many of these transactions can take place here in the town square. By night, clubs and bars are in full swing, and we see many tourists stopping to pick up girls. Many look to be underage, with some transactions facilitated by two men. These men in red and white shirts. We're told many girls can be controlled by pimps and traffickers, being sold and held against their will. And with sex for sale everywhere, impoverished children are easy targets for abuse. Yo era menor de edad cuando me mantenían en esta plaza. Tú te quedas impactada de ver cómo está la explotación sexual y, y, y se ha, lo hacen invisible cuando aún eso es visible. Wendy was just 16 years old when she was trafficked and sold to foreigners for sex. Y ellos no saben ni se imaginan el daño que le están causando a esa joven, a esa adolescente. Mientras ellos disfrutan por un momento de placer, esa joven está siendo marcada para toda su vida. Está siendo destruida, sus sueños se están derrumbando. From a rural area, she had never before stepped foot outside her town. When a neighbor promised her work, in one of Cartagena's restaurants. Una persona muy allegada. Eh, se ganó mi confianza y aprovechándose de la necesidad de vulnerabilidad. Aunque él nunca me dijo que yo iba a ser explotada sexualmente. When she arrived, she was forced to live with her pimp, who monitored her 24 hours a day. Under his control, Wendy says she was regularly drugged and threatened. Sí, muchos dicen, no, ella está ahí porque quiere. Ese trabajo lo decidió ella, pero eso no es un trabajo. Y resulta que ella no está sola, porque aquel que tú ves tomándose una cerveza o aquel que ves tomándose un café, ese puede ser su tratante o su proxeneta, porque uno nunca está sola. Siempre el proxeneta o el tratante se hace pasar por uno más del montón. Pasa desapercibido, pero uno sí está con el miedo y uno los, los reconoce con la mirada. At the hands of her pimp, Wendy says she endured extreme physical and verbal abuse. Y me daba planazos con machete, me tenía las piernas verdes y ya golpe por todos lados, me pegaba en la calle, ya no, y yo dije, no, ya no más, ya me quiero morir. Y llegó un día 
y cogió una navaja y comenzó a tirarme y me cortó aquí, me cortó aquí. Eh, mi mano derecha no puedo, eh, mi dedo meñique no lo puedo manejar muy bien porque me, lo, me cortó los tendones, porque me tiró a desgollar y yo agarré la navaja y la jaló. Pero a veces uno es desventaja porque uno, una mujer y un hombre de esos, y uno se sentía, yo me sentía como, como un granito de arroz, como tan chiquitica. Now free, it took eight years before Wendy managed to escape. Eight years of life lost. Yo digo que yo quería como que hacer todo eh, por mi familia. Si tal vez todo eso no me hubiese pasado, eh, no me hubiese alejado de mi familia. Fueron muchas, o sea, nunca voy a superarlo, nunca. Donde hayan recuerdos que digan, yo estuve con mi familia en Navidad, todo rodido. No, no tuvimos eso porque yo me ausenté. Entonces, esos, esas son cosas que me duelen a mí. Porque ellos pasaron todo esto por mí. Y son momentos que no, no, no los voy a recuperar nunca. Nunca voy a recuperar esos momentos. Tourists who have sex with children are breaking the law, but they take advantage of local situations in which minors are made easily available for exploitation. Poor economic conditions, favourable exchange rates for the tourist and relative anonymity are all key factors. La otra cara de Cartagena. Estamos en La Boquilla, en una parte en la zona norte de la ciudad de Cartagena. Como estás viendo, bueno, un poco abandonada por el gobierno, eh, carente de muchas cosas. On the doorstep of Cartagena's luxury beach resorts, locals here live in extreme poverty. Buenas tardes. Shirley is the local community leader. Aquí hay sectores que no tienen agua. Hay sectores que la luz es prácticamente robada. La, la educación aquí no es una educación buena. Ven, dame la vida, dame la vida. Todo eso lo vuelve a uno eso. muy susceptible ante una situación. Me tienen que enseñar. Shirley says poverty makes kids more vulnerable. Tourists seem to offer money and opportunity. Ahora qué niño, qué joven no quiere tener teléfono. ¿Quién no quiere tener un juguete avanzado? Ve a la televisión, yo quiero esto y ve que el padre no se lo puede comprar pero llega una persona de fuera con malas intenciones, ofreciéndole, y él lo va a tomar, él lo va a tomar. Making matters worse is the fact the community lacks any knowledge of what sexual abuse and sexual exploitation are. This can mean the family is complicit or reluctant to intervene. Yo tengo un caso que yo ayudé a una niña de 14 años y Y ella me decía, yo no sabía que el que me tocaran por aquí, el yo estar con una persona mayor que yo era una explotación sexual. O sea, yo quedé tan sorprendida. Y son cosas que cuando uno desconoce, uno permite que abusen de uno. It's this context that traffickers and foreigners exploit. Esta es la casa. Shirley shows me the house of one foreigner who was living here in the community. He's been arrested on charges of child sexual abuse. What is this just next door? Is that a kindergarten? Sí, allá donde está el portón azul es un colegio. Y acá diagonal hay otro. This is the man who was living in that house. 
a 79-year-old Italian national named Dario Lavoratori. Currently in jail, he's accused of sexually abusing three girls, aged just 11 years old. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, gracias. Veronica, not her real name, is the mum of one of the alleged victims. She's agreed to speak to me by phone to protect her identity. According to Veronica, in June last year, her daughter was introduced to Dario Lavoratori by a cousin who met Dario while attending school. She says they visited Dario's house on several occasions after he promised to teach them to speak Italian. Then, in November last year, her daughter's cousin and friend went missing for several hours. They were later allegedly found drugged and alone. It's alleged at least one of the girls was raped. This is incredibly shocking and upsetting to hear. How did you feel when you heard this? How is your daughter doing now? No, no está deprimida ni afligida ni nada. Pero la otra niña sí está un poco bastante afectada, está rebelde. At Cartagena's jail, 143 inmates are being held for sex crimes, including child sexual abuse and trafficking. Among them are foreigners from as far afield as Italy and Germany. 79-year-old Dario Lavoratori is being held here, awaiting trial. Why do you think you're in here right now? Posso dire, come dicono tutti i reclusi, sono innocente, sono innocente, ma io sono sono una persona che all'epoca della della sentenza aveva 79 anni e 4 mesi perché ho dei problemi grandi alle ginocchia e guardi queste mani Dario is a former fencing instructor who coached junior and national squads in Italy He says he first came to Cartagena to give fencing classes and that he bought a house in the community only after he was invited to volunteer for a foundation so why were you bringing gifts to the school? Is that normal behaviour, do you think? Normal, eh? Normal, sì. Eh? Sì. Ma è per aiutare questi ragazzini, non è mica... Eh, eh, oh. A volte vanno delle, delle persone a visitare e portano dei, dei regali, può essere cose da mangiare, libri, cose da vestire. You say it's normal, but there are a lot of people that would be watching this that think that behaviour is suspect indicating grooming of some sort. What do you say to that? A secondi a secondo fine. Ma no perché io avevo pochissimi contatti con i ragazzi. Dario says he knew one of the girls who he met through the school and does not deny that two girls visited him on several occasions at his home. We can't go into too many details about the allegations because Dario is awaiting trial. Forse lei vuol dire, vuol, cap- vuol sapere se sessualmente mi attiravano. Non lo so, mi faccio una domanda precisa e io le dico tutto quello che tengo qua dentro. So were you attracted to the girls? Allora, se lei mi dice le attraevano sessualmente, no. 
È sufficiente o vuole che glielo spieghi il perché? Yeah. Please do you explain that to me. No, really perché per me sono, sono troppo piccoli, sono bambine. Eh, how old are you? Take off. Lei sa perfettamente bene perché a me mi, mi piace una, una donna minimo, minimo deve avere le mestruazioni. Secondo, deve lubrificare. Whilst offensive, this denial of attraction appears to be part of Dario's defense, along with claims he's impotent. Why should we believe you and not these young girls? Amen, è giusto. Quello che dite è giusto. Però lei a chi crede di più? A un uomo? O a un bambino di dieci anni? But, but why are the grown man more trustworthy than a child? È che un uomo adulto può ragionare. Può ragionare. Un bambino di dieci anni, di nove, di nove anni, non ragiona molti. Per esempio, un psicologo può capire molto bene se il bambino dice bugie o dice la verità. È un pochino più difficile riuscire a comprenderlo in una persona adulta. E a nascondersi dentro tra, tra molte cose, no? Bambino no, è limitato. The allegations against you are in many ways horrific. I mean, how do they make you feel? Io non so come fa un uomo, un uomo a violare una bambina di 10 anni se questa non lo critica. Come fa? Non sono, capace di, non sono capace di immaginarmi. Tutto deve rompere. Io, no, io no, non ho virilità. Io ho pelle e cuoio e basta. E come faccio? Come posso io violare? Now deemed a threat to society, Dario will be kept in prison until he faces trial. If found guilty, he could receive 30 years behind bars. But it's cold comfort for those in Cartagena's community. <laughs> The country's sex tourism boom shows no signs of waning. In its shadow, they live with the constant threat of new predators. How does that make you feel? Atesoraran a sus hijos como lo que son, como un tesoro. Que los protegiera con, con su propia vida. Para que nadie le robara esa sonrisa a un niño. No sé por qué no pasa cuando no debería ser así. Ojalá y uno pudiera tener el poder de cambiarle como el chi a esas personas.